In this video we're going to take a look at the Kernel Droid Challenge, which is a beginner challenge from the Kernel CTF that was running over the weekend. The description says, I have built my own system that allows a login into the Kernel Droid, but unfortunately I forgot the password. Can you help me recover it? So we've got a file to download. It's an ASM file, which is assembly, and we basically need to reverse this small assembly script. So I'm going to open it up in Codium. Um, I didn't have any syntax highlighting on this to begin with, so you can just install an extension to um, enable that. Just search for ASM and find an extension in there if you want that kind of syntax highlighting, if you're using VS Code or Codium. And let's just have a quick look through the code here to see what we've got. I'm going to drop down to the bottom of the code where we have this data section, and we can see that we have some strings in here. So welcome to Kernel Droid. Please input your PIN code to enter the phone. Um, we have an invalid pin length message, which is telling us that it should be eight, eight numbers, eight digits. And we have an invalid pin message, so if we put in an invalid pin, obviously we're going to get that message. And if we get the valid pin, we're going to get our flag, so the flag is the pin. So just from looking at the strings there, we got a good idea how the program works. Just to short disclaimer, I'm not, uh, I'm not particularly good with assembly. I've probably forgotten more than I've learned over the years just due to not really using it on a daily basis too much um, and the fact that Geardra makes things so easy these days with the decompiled code but um, yeah let's try and trace our way through this so we have a start function basically here at the beginning this is where we're gonna start we can see that dead code is being pushed onto the stack and then we have this JB instruction so what we're gonna want to do for this because we're going to be dealing with quite a lot of conditions, if we just before we even go through this, let's just scroll down a little bit. So we can see that there are some checks being done here. We have a lot of compares, and we have some JE, some JNE, some JG, and these are all different jump instructions. So depending on what the result is of the operation before it, will depend whether it's going to. So, um, for example, in this case, it's saying if the last condition was true, if if the 35 equaled what we had in this register then it will say jump equal to invalid pin. So it's basically saying if these two values match, then we're going to jump down to invalid pin, which, as we can guess from the name, is going to print out um, that was an invalid pin, and then it's going to jump to end, which is just going to exit the program. Okay, so because we know we're going to be dealing with quite a few of those style instructions, let's um, go and search for assembly jump instructions and we'll just go and get up a table which we can use to let's have a look here just want to try and find a table which kind of maps out the different that so here's some we have here so we've got a uh, jump equal or jump zero jump not equal jump greater than jump less than I don't see the JB there uh, JB jump below okay so that should be fine let me see how this one looks Alright, I kind of had a better table whenever I was doing this, but um, it's fine. As long as we can see what they equal, and if we need to reference them, that's that's fine. In fact, what I might do is minimize this a bit. Let's move this over here. Let's do the same with our assembly. And that way we can reference those quite easily as we go through. Let me zoom in on this a bit so we can see what's going on. So to start with here, we have dead code being pushed onto the stack. We have this jump below um, here, but there's no comparison done before there, so I'm not sure what actually happens in this case. But if we go down to jump label 1, there's no condition to this, so it's basically just saying no matter what, we're going to jump to label 1. So although we have some stuff here, it's doing the comparison between Cafe Babe and this 00F, and we've got some more jumps, that doesn't really matter because we're already jumping straight down to label 1 here. So I guess this is just into create a bit of obfuscation. Um, we go to label 1 and we can see then it's pushing to the RDI. It's going to push R8. Again, not really important. We can see here it's going to move this value into the R8 register and then it's going to compare R8 with this value. Um, obviously this isn't going to match because it's basically just comparing these two literal values and we can see that they don't match. Um, so it's going to say jump if these don't equal then jump to label 2 otherwise do all this stuff here 
Um, we know these don't equal, so it's going to jump to label 2. We get to label 2, and although we've got some stuff here, it doesn't really matter because we've got an unconditional jump. There's, there's, no, there's no way this code is going to be reached here. So it jumps straight to label 3. It prints out the welcome message. It's going to call puts to print that out. Um, I should have mentioned actually, so we can see the external functions that are being brought in here at the top as well. Um, okay, yeah, it puts out the message. It's going to jump to label 4. Label 4 is going to load the pin code, the correct pin code, into the RDI. It's going to call gets. Um, and it's going to read our. Oh, sorry, this is, this is going to populate this pin code with the value that we enter. So we're going to enter in some digits there. Um, it's going to call string length and it's going to compare it to 0x8. So it's going to compare it to 8. And that's just going to basically say if the pin isn't 8 digits long, then jump to this invalid pin length. Otherwise, we can jump to label 5. So we have the jump not equal. So if um, we do this comparison with 8 and it doesn't equal, it's going to jump there. But if it does equal 8, it's going to jump to label 5. So we go down to label 5. And this is where the main checks are being done with the actual pin codes. So if we work our way through this, we don't need to worry about too much of this. Let's jump down to where the pin code is being actually compared. So we can see that this is the first element of the pin code. You can see here we're going to do the next element, we're going to do the third element, etc. And if we have a look at the first element then, it's going to, comp it's going to load it into the R9B register, so a byte, I guess, of the register. It's going to compare that with 0x30, which if we go to, oh, I've got this open already. We can go to ASCII to hex or Cyberchef or something. And where's our hexadecimal? If we put in 30 here, that's going to be, I think, 48 in decimal. But that'll also be a zero in text in ASCII. So because we are, re it's reading in, the, the pin as a string, then that's what we need to look at here. So essentially what's happening then, let me go back to the screen, is it's loading in the first digit, it's comparing it to a zero, and if it doesn't equal a zero, this comparison isn't true, it's going to jump to invalid pin. So even though we have all these other checks here, it doesn't matter, right? Because this is saying if the first character does not equal a zero, it's invalid. So it's telling us straight away on the very first condition that the first element, the first item is a zero. Uh, let me... Oh. Let me open up Sublime. We'll just keep a track of this in here. So we've got a zero. That zooms in really slowly. Um, okay. We've got a zero there. So we get onto the next one, which is down here. We've got our first one already. It's checking the second digit of the pin, and it's going to compare it to a to 34 in hex. And again, it's just doing jump not equal. So we don't need to worry about what's well. There's nothing else ha happening there anyway. We've just got a no operation instruction. It goes onto the next one. So we know that the second digit of the pin is a four. So we get onto our next one here. It's loading in the third digit and it's going to compare it with 37 in hex, so 7 in our ASCII and we've this time we have this JG so we can go over to our reference here and see that that's jump if greater than so if it's greater than a 7 then it's going to be invalid so we go down and have a look see what it's doing next and next it's going to say if it's it's going to compare it to a 0 and if it's not a zero, it's going to jump not equal. So this first condition didn't really matter because we know that it's a zero. So that's our next digit again, another zero. We can get on to the next part here, which is going to load the fourth digit. It's going to compare it with a nine. And if it's equal to nine, it's going to jump to invalid pin. So we know it doesn't equal nine. And then we have another comparison here which is doing the same thing it's comparing it to a zero and it's saying if it's not equal to a zero jump to invalid so we know that it is equal to a zero so we've got our fourth digit and go down and have a look at the next part and it's loading the fifth digit it's going to compare it with a one and it's saying JB invalid pin so again we're going to have a look here jump below so if it's less than a one it's an invalid pin 
and then we see the next part is comparing it to a 2 and it's saying jump greater than or equal to invalid pin. So if it's less than 1 it's invalid but if it's 2 or more it's, in, it's also invalid. So there's only one value it can be and that's say 1. So we'll go and add that in here and we get onto our sixth digit which is going to compare to a 0. It's saying JBE so JBE jump below or equal to so if it's zero or less it's invalid so we know it's not zero or less and then we have this 32 JAE which is jump above or equal to so if it's above or equal to two it's invalid if it's equal to or less than zero it's invalid so the answer should be a one again and we'll get down to the seventh digit getting through them quite quickly now um, it's going to compare to a 9 and if it's not equal to a 9 it's invalid so that's an easy one we'll just add a 9 and our final digit it's checking if it equals 36 it's going to JL which is jump less so if it's less than 6 it's invalid and then it's also doing a comparison and saying if it's greater than 6 it's also invalid. So if it's less than 6 it's invalid, if it's greater than 6 it's invalid, so it must be 6. So we put that in, we've got our 8 digits and now because we've, we, didn't hit, we didn't hit this condition here it's going to jump to valid pin and the valid pin is basically just going to print us out the pin. You can see it's loading in the valid pin message into the RDI, it's loading in the pin code into the RSI and then it's going to call printf and print that out. Um, so that's how we get the flag from reversing the assembly. So this is quite an easy challenge but assembly is tricky if you're not um, ex experienced with it which I wouldn't say I, I am particularly. You know there are quite often times where I see instructions and I have to go on Google to see what they're, what they're doing. Um, whenever I was doing the ROP Emporium series I learned quite a lot um, about assembly and some different like ROP gadgets and stuff and I've forgotten pretty much all of it just because I'm not I'm not doing that stuff unfortunately on a regular basis but uh, I hope this video helped anyway if you have any questions or comments leave them down below thanks